In this video, I'll break down how to use my really cool ultimate bundle that's for sale on my digital store. Now the bundle comes with a total of 16 plugins, which just create some really cool different looks and effects that you just can't do natively inside of Final Cut Pro. So in this video, I'll break down how to first install these plugins and then how to use each individual plugin so you have a basic idea of how to use them. So once you purchase the ultimate bundle you should get an email where you can go ahead and download a zip file. So this is what it should look like, it should just be a zip file. All you want to do is double click on the zip file right here and it should just open the folder. Now this is the folder you want to drag into your motion template, not the zip file, the folder. Now what you want to do in order to install these, you want to go over here, click on go, click on home, then go over here to movies, double click on movies and then you should have a motion template folder and then inside your motion template folder you want to put it in your effects folder now this is really important if i go out to motion template folder now if you don't have these folders you should be able to create them yourself by simply right clicking and, and uh, click on create new folder but if i select on this folder right here and then simply right click on the folder and then click on get info you want to make sure under here, if I open this up, names and extensions, you want to make sure it says motion templates dot localized. This is really, really important. So go ahead and let's just exit out of the motion template folder. Now let's go ahead and open it up. And then also with the uh, with the effects folder, um, right click on the folder, click on get info, and you want to make sure it says effects dot localized. Those, the, uh, having that dot localized in the names and extensions is really important. And then you can just simply close the folder. And then if I open up the folder right here into my effects, as you can see, the ultimate bundle is right here. So all you simply want to do is drag this ultimate bundle folder into your effects folder, which should be in your motions template folder. The first couple of effects I want to go over are these really cool like stroke and outer glow effects which basically just add like a nice outline around your text. As you can see I just have a text layer right here. I'm going to open up the effects panel if you and, and if you install everything correctly you should have an own it should create its own category called the ultimate bundle. As you can see here are all the plugins so it comes with a total of 16 plugins. So let's first go over the outer glow and the um, stroke effect. So if I head over here to stroke I'm going to go ahead and just simply you can take the effect and then just drag it on top of your um, text layer right here. Now we're also going to head over here and we're going to apply the outer glow effect also. Basically it's going to add some outlines around your text. Let's go ahead and let's disable the outer glow first and let's go ahead and just zoom in a little bit just so you can see what's going on. So we click on this text layer and let's first apply, let's first mess with the stroke effect. So let's change the color to something like maybe like black and then we can go to the width and then we can increase the width. As you can see, there you go. You have a really cool outline around your text. And you could also add the outer glow effect too. As you can see, that also adds a, 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 um, some other really cool outlines around the text. We can go ahead and change the color to like a purple color. And then as you can see right here, already this really cool like kind of like outline around your text. The next effect that I'll go over is really cool like light sweep effect. So let's go ahead and apply the light sweep onto the actual text layer or you can also apply this onto like a PNG um, logo. So let's go ahead and head over here to the text layer and then just click on command B to blade it because we only want the light sweep effect applied to this portion of the text. Now open up the effects panel and you'll have two options, light sweep left to right and then the just the normal light sweep effect. So let's go ahead and just take the light sweep effect, uh, light sweep effect and place it onto the text layer. As you can see already, if we go to the timeline, you can see you have this really cool like shine effect that just goes to the text. Let's go ahead and play it right here, and there you go, this really cool like light sweep effect. Now you can also click on the text there, or if you're applying this onto a logo, and as you can see, here is the light sweep. You can mess with the color, the feather, the opacity, the blend mode. There are a whole bunch of different settings. You can also like um, mess with the direction. You can mess with the speed, how fast you want it. There are a whole bunch of really cool customizations you can do with this, but at its just base, this is what the light sweep effect looks like. It's just a really cool effect, and it's a shame that it doesn't come natively with Final Cut. The next effect that I'll go over is this really cool like Pro Mist and Halation effect. So if I head over here to the effects panel, we're going to first apply the Pro Mist filter onto the clip right here. So apply the Pro Mist filter, we'll go ahead and let's zoom in a little bit to 150. And obviously as you can see, nothing really happens. What you really want to do is you want to go to the threshold and then you simply want to just bring down the threshold. As you can see already, you have some really cool glue effect and you of course mess with the settings, but the threshold is the main setting 
lighting and that's what's going to give you a really cool glow effect so you see before and after this effect is great to apply onto like lights or like a light source but you can also just apply onto a clip to give it that really cool like soft like hazy effect now if we go ahead and disable the promise filter let's zoom in a little bit and let's go ahead and apply the halation effect so if we head over here now it's not actually called halation it's actually called channel blur so if we apply the channel blur effect onto the clip right here what you want to do is you want to scroll down until you find channel blur you want to uncheck all this stuff and you only want blur red check uh, blur red check now go ahead over here to the amount as you can see there you go now as you can see how this really nice like as you can see here's a good example right here you really cool like blurred edges it basically just simulates the halation effect that you might see in dehancer and then if you also apply the promise filter and maybe apply like a film LUT, now you basically or you can also apply some grain too and you've created the dehancer effect in Final Cut for much for a much cheaper price. The next effect I'm going to go over is a really cool CRT TV effect. So if I head over here to the effects panel and scroll down until we find CRT TV, simply apply this effect onto your clip right here and already you have a really cool like TV looking effect. Now what you want to do right here is the fisheye amount, I would change this maybe to like five or six to give it that really cool like fisheye effect. You could of course adjust the radius. A couple other settings I would mess with is maybe uh, like apply the uh, mess with the static. You can also a uh, number of lines, number of scan lines. You can go over here and saturate a little bit. But there you go. There's the basic idea. This really cool. You basically like faking like a TV effect. And there you go. You have this really cool like old TV glitch effect. The next effect I'm going to go over is a really simple effect. And it's just like a really nice soft focus effect. So we head over here to the effects panel. And let's apply the soft, uh, the soft focus effect onto your clip. Now this is a very small, very subtle effect. It's kind of like the Promis filter a little bit. But it just adds some nice glow to your actual clip. Head over here and just simply like crank up the amount really high and as you can see see you have this really nice hazy effect so it's kind of like the promise filter but a little bit different it's just a very small subtle effect as you can see it just as it makes it almost maybe look a little like hazy a little dreamy i just think this is a really cool effect again it's just a very subtle effect but it is a really cool effect the next effect i'll go over is this really cool like page curl effect so you can create some really cool like freeze frame transitions so if we head over here to this clip so go to the beginning of the clip right here click on option f to create a freeze frame so all we did was we froze the first frame now we can go ahead and adjust this to however long uh, we want it maybe like one uh, second and maybe like 16 frames and then we we'll go ahead and take this freeze frame you're just going to pl place it on top of the clip we want to make this a little bit shorter right here so it's just basically like a normal freeze frame transition we just froze the first frame of the second clip so we can go ahead and play right here this is what it looks like you see it's just frozen and then transitions into the next clip now what you want to do is head over here to the, to the freeze frame clip head over here to the uh, masks so what you want to do is you want uh, masks and keying you want to apply um, the uh, the draw mask onto the freeze frame transition now, I'm gonna do a very harsh a very like rough job just for the sake of the tutorial now what you want to do is you want to just take the mask and you want to just simply cut out whatever you want cut out so you see we just want this part cut out now, again this is not gonna be perfect I'm rushing through this just for the sake of the tutorial and to go up to 50% to go around the outside of the actual freeze frame right here and then you can just simply wait until you see that little icon and then you can connect the dots and there you go now you have a really cool cutout again this is a really rough job but I just want to show you how to do it now what you want to do is you see now you have a freeze frame head over here to the effects panel go to the ultimate bundle scroll down until you find page curl apply the page curl effect onto the clip right here and as you can see see there we go but you see it's going in the opposite direction you can go through and mess with the different settings you know mess the the, the uh, direction of the actual page curl but as you can see now we go ahead and wait for final cut to render as you see it kind of like peels off the screen but it's going in the opposite direction so what we have to do is click on option g and we'll just name this one just for the sake of the tutorial click on ok so you're just basically creating a compound clip so you're grouping it to Together. Now what you want to do is head over here to the speed options, go over here and click on reverse clip. Now the clip is playing in the opposite direction, so instead of it peeling off, it's now peeling on. So click on command R. Let's go ahead and play this clip right here. As you can see, now the thing is just peeling on. So there you go. Simple as that. That's how you create this really cool like page curl sticker freeze frame transition. The next effect I'm going to go over is this really cool like offset effect. Now I paired it with a really cool freeze frame transition to give it, you know, to make it look really cool. So again, same thing. Go to the beginning, click on option F to create a freeze frame. Then we'll go ahead and just 
change the duration of this freeze frame to something like, I don't know, maybe like, uh, let's do something like uh, 10 frames right here. So click on 10 frames, go ahead and place this on top of the clip. So again, it's the same thing before, you're just introducing a fr the, the first frame from the second clip. If we go ahead and play the video right here, it's frozen and then transitions into the next clip. That's basically the, the basics of creating a freeze frame transition. Now the same thing too, let's head over here to the effects panel, masks and keying apply the draw mask onto the freeze frame transition. And again, we will do a really rough job of cutting out the subject. Obviously take your time, but just for the sake of the tour, I'm gonna go really quickly. Let's go ahead and just simply mask him out. And there we go, you have created a mask, you, you have cut out the subject. Now let's go ahead and hold down the option key to duplicate it, go to the bottom clip, and let's just delete um, the draw mask. Now, of course, you can do whatever you want with this. Let's just, for the sake of the tutorial, let's uh, scale it up to actually just go ahead and click on the freeze frame transition or the uh, freeze frame of this is the, the, the cutout of the subject. Let's increase the scale really high to like 170, uh, 178, place a keyframe, and then go to the end of the clip, and then um, go ahead and let's change this back down to uh, 100, so basically it'll keyframe the scale from 178 to 100 in a span of 10 frames. So if we go ahead and play this clip right here, as you see, it just zooms in, just scales down. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and select on the bottom clip and create a really cool transition by head over here, go to the ultimate bundle, and then what you want to do is you want to apply the offset effect, apply offset onto the clip right here, and let's go ahead and go to, let's say the vertical offset, let's go ahead place a keyframe on vertical offset. You have to place a keyframe first. Just applying this effect is not gonna do anything. You actually have to keyframe it. So place a keyframe on, on vertical offset. Let's go to the end, and you want the number to end in like a 100. So let's go ahead and just drag this up. So let's go ahead and just type in here, and let's say negative 200, and then click on return. Again, you want the number to end in a 100 number, and you wanna make sure that turns yellow, which means it is keyframed. So we go ahead and play the clip right here. As you can see, the background, it just created that really cool like offset effect and there you go now we go ahead and also like use the freeze frame transition we have created a really cool transition let's go ahead and play the clip right here now you have this really cool like where the, the subject is zooming out and where the background is kind of creating that really cool like offset effect you have a really cool transition now you can also go ahead and apply motion blur if you want to kind of have it a little bit blurry but that's a, a complete uh, uh, that's a complete uh, personal preference the next effect I wanna go over is this really cool like strobe uh, flicker effect. So here's the original clip, as you can see. Now we go to the next clip. So just simply place the clip on top. Go over here to the ultimate bundle and you wanna apply the strobe flicker onto the top clip right here. And then basically what you wanna do is you wanna just, if I go ahead and play the clip right here, this is what it looks like. It's a little intense. Now you can go over here, select on this one. You can either leave the background, as you see, the background can either be black or you can take the opacity and turn it down so you can see the clip ben uh, beneath it. Now go to the speed and basically the higher the speed, the faster it's gonna be. So go ahead in here and let's do something like 630. Click on return. And now basically you just, you just you go ahead and mess with the speed. So we go ahead and play the clip right here. As you can see, there we go. Now it's just simply like going back and forth in between the two clips. So if you want that really cool like stutter flicker effect, this is just a lot easier than actually individually cutting the clips. It just saves you a lot of time. And the next couple of effects I wanna go over are these really cool like glint and like dazzle effects right here. So I head over here to the effects panel. Let's go ahead and let's try glint right here. So click on glint. So just simply drag the glint effect on top of your clip right here. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Just simply as that. Now you can go through and mess with the exposure uh, right here. You can also mess with like the, the intensity. So there we go. So again, this is just all personal preference, but just a really cool like glow effect. You can change a, a tint color, but there we go. There is a really cool like glow effect. And the next one we'll go over is dazzle. So head over here to the effects panel, apply dazzle onto your clip. As you can see, it adds a little bit of glow. We can of course adjust the amount. We can go through and adjust the threshold. So again, just go through and make it you know your own, but there you go. There's this really cool like glow effects. The next couple of effects I want to go over is this really cool like stop motion effect and a really cool transform tool. So if you head over here and play this clip right here, you see this is what the original clip looks like. So you see it's just playing in normal speed. If I head over here to the effects panel, now basically what you want to do is you want to either apply the strobe effect or the stop motion effect. Now essentially 
believe these are the same effects. I just included them both because sometimes I found with different clips they kind of like react a little bit differently. But in most cases, I would just apply the stop motion effect, but the strobe effect is, is essentially the same effect too. So simply apply this the stop motion effect onto your clip right here. And as you see, you go to the clip right here. Now frames per second, the lower the number, the slower it's gonna be. So let's go ahead and just take this all the way down. Let's go ahead, actually, let's just type in a number. Let's click on three, click on return. And basically what it's gonna do, if I go ahead and play the clip right here, as you see, now it's, it's making the clip uh, like a um, low shutter effect. So I disable the stop motion effect. Here is before. And then if you go ahead and apply the stop motion effect. Here is after. So you can basically create this really cool stop motion effect. I know in Premiere Pro it's called posterize time. For some reason, Final Cut doesn't natively have this effect. That's why I included this effect into my bundle. So you can go ahead and use the posterize time effect for Final Cut Pro, which I think is a really cool effect. The last effect I'm gonna go over is really cool, like transform tool. Now, if you've, been, if you've been using Final Cut for a long time, you know the transform tool is a little bit limited. That's why I basically took Apple Motion's transform tool and put it into Final Cut. So we head over to the effects panel. And all you do is can apply the transform effect onto a clip video or whatever so let's apply it onto this text layer as you can see now you have a whole bunch of options so I head over here to rotation see now I can rotate it on the y-axis I can rotate it on the z-axis and I can rotate it on the x-axis so you can see you have a lot more control I can head over here to shear I can shear the text because you see you have a whole bunch of controls adjust the position and there you go see so just basically is it it basically, I'm taking Apple Motion's transform tool and putting it into Final Cut. Because if you see in Final Cut, if I head over here to the rotation, this is this is the only rotation you have. You can't really move it right here. You can't really move it on the Y axis. So that's why I included it. It's just a really cool effect, or just a really, it's just a nice tool to have because you never know when you're going to use the transform tool. That's why I just want to include it in this bundle. And that is how you install and use the plugins from my really cool bundle. Now, a couple of things that you might be want to be aware of when using this a couple of troubleshooting tips is one of the things you probably want to do is if it's not working I would try updating Final Cut these plugins are really only going to work in like Final Cut 10.7 or above so you want to make sure if it's not working update Final Cut make sure if it's still not working make sure again like I showed you before make sure the folders are like dot localized that is really um, important so those are some of some of the uh, main tips another thing you want to do too is you want to make sure you have Final Cut closed when you're installing these plugins and then reopen Final Cut so those are kind of my troubleshooting things you want to just do that first if it's still not working you can go ahead and send me a dm on instagram and i'll go ahead and help you fix it but if you try those three things and they're still not working i will be happy to go ahead and help you fix them but these are just some i just want to just basically give you a basic idea of how to use these really um cool plugins hopefully you enjoyed uh, this video and hopefully you found it helpful and informative if you enjoy these types of videos make sure to hit that subscribe button again the link to my digital store will be down in the description below you can go ahead and purchase this really cool bundle along with a whole bunch of other cool plugins, presets, and transitions. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.